All right, if you have your Bibles quickly, I, I want to preach on, I don't, I, I, I don't want to preach actually, I want to I talk to the church. I, I want to talk to the church the same way I spoke to myself a couple of days ago. And I, I do really believe that I'm, I'm speaking to myself as well. But the, one of the reasons why the media asked me, what's the preach for Sunday? And I say to them, I don't have a preach at the time they mentioned, I think that was on Wednesday, Thursday. Then I spend time with the Lord to talk about what I want to talk about today. And let me give a disclaimer. This will sting. But it will heal. I do really believe that what I want to share. I was the first person to receive the rebuke from the Lord and look at scripture. And I do really believe that we will be edified today. You may not like what you want to hear, but I promise he's going to heal you. Amen. I want to preach on a sermon that I've titled. And, and before I even go on with the title, I want everyone to recognize that you're whole humans. And because you're whole humans, you are not perfect. And it's, all no, all, it's almost natural, not almost, very natural for you to make mistakes. Even though that the old man is dead and reckoned dead, there was still a sin nature until glorification. And one of the things that the old man does or did before he died, it was a schoolmaster that taught your sin nature on how to do life. So much so that even though your old man is dead, your sin nature was a faithful student. So everything that your old man did, your sin nature wants to do. And even though you are born again, Holy Ghost filled, you still have a sin nature until the time of glory. Amen. Amen. We have been justified. We are being sanctified. But we will be glorified. And that is the absence of sin. Of freedom from the presence of sin. And because there is a sin nature, every now and again, there are things that we do that we shouldn't be doing. Paul, who was the mastermind in his epistolary would also say stuff like, I don't want to do all the things good and be a castaway. Paul understood that there was a thorn in his flesh that would hold him back. He said that he was buffeted by Satan. I believe that as much as we try to be good people, there is a sin nature that wants us to live like the old man. Amen. And that's the reason why every now and again you find yourself doing the thing that you thought you'd you, you, you got saved. Why am I doing the same thing again? It's a sin nature. And what I want to talk about today uh, is a product of that sin nature. One of many things. I want to honor Prophetess Cynthia in the house. Thank you all the way from Maryland. And I've got many sons and daughters. She is one that the Lord has given that um, you call it the the virtual space. She reaches to thousands, thousands of people on the virtual space and becoming a very prominent voice in Maryland. I love you already and thank you for honoring me. She will ask me every time, what can I do? But thank you so much for coming. She flew all the way from the state to Majestic Lionesses yesterday. Yeah. You know, a very well-established attorney. Is it attorney? Is that what they call it in America? Yeah. yeah. And uh, she's rich, but don't ask her for money. <laughs> yeah, she has money. Don't ask her for money. I'll tell you right now. I've got sons and daughters that are wealthy. So once we want to buy the church, I'll tell her, I need, I need a check. I need a check. ASAP. I can't, I can't cover you and not ask for your money. <laughs> but God has blessed me with amazing people. Thank you so much for being part of us today. I want to preach or teach or, or talk to us on a sermon called A Spirit Called Offense. And I preach this word because I'm speaking to myself and I want everyone to listen. I don't need any ushers to work now. I need everyone to sit down and take these words. Everybody. And I, I like for you to listen with what I want to share with you. And one of the reasons why I didn't put it out on social media because the church is very funny. When they hear stuff like that, they might be thinking, yeah, Apostle is talking about me. I'm not going to come to church. 
So it's good that you're hearing it today because you can, if you leave, you're suspect. <laughs> but, but the reason why I want to talk about it is because I also, as a person, struggle with this. Everyone struggles with this. And I don't want you to put on the Superman and feel like, no, I'm, I'm without offense. You actually are a person, you are human, and you can be offended. And I'm going to deal with this case ASAP because if this is one of the epidemic in the body of Christ, that if we don't deal with it, it results into insolence. It's a virus that eats from within. At one point or the other, you would have been offended with someone. If someone tells me that they've never been offended in their life before, I'll say to them, they have no friends and families. Because you would have been offended with your parents, your best friends, even your pastors. I promise you, I've offended many of you, but you can't tell me. And I don't know the reason why, but don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and I think this needs to be spoken about in the body of Christ. Because there was a spirit that is called offense. And if we don't deal with this spirit, do you know one of the things that we find in scripture, how a third fell with Satan? The Bible says that Satan was trafficking. The word trafficking is the translation merchandising. What Satan was doing, he was going to other angels and telling them how he felt. Oh, he doesn't want to me as the cherubim. I'm good enough. And then began to speak into the ears of other angels that fell with him. One of the things that offense does, when offense is not dealt with, it becomes a seed that is sown in the ground. And when we don't deal with that seed, it brings forth fruits, corrupt fruits. And that's why when we find offense, we have to deal with offense from the root. You cannot deal with offense from the branches. You have to go to the root and find out the cause of your offense. And that's why many of you are still upset with people because you don't know how, why you're upset. You've tried to do everything, but you haven't gone to the root to find out the reason why you're upset. Jesus understands that you can be angry and say, see not. It's, it's, a, it's a response of emotional reflex. You can't, it's okay to be angry. Someone saw that the man was angry, went to the temple and turned their tables. He was angry. It's part of your emotional package. But what does it look like to, to, to allow these spirits deal with us? And I couldn't find the best way. I went online. I said, let me just find a very, you know, apparently I've been training lately online. Yeah, I guess you don't know. I've been trained in. I love it. They're making me famous. My God, if, if you're still in the more friend request I've had. <laughs> My God. I, I asked, I, I looked online, offense, it says annoyance. Do you have it there? I don't want to be quicker than you, by the way. Okay. Annoyance or resentment brought about by a perceived insult to or disregard for oneself. Offense. It's an annoyance or resentment brought about by a perceived insult to or disregard for oneself. You feel like you've been disregarded because it's offense. You feel that you've been disrespected a certain way because it's offense. You feel like nobody's calling you by the title that you feel like you're called into. Some people get offended for not calling them by the titles. Call me Oscar, I'm an apostle. And they get offended. People get offended when they feel like they're not giving the respect that they deserve. And very much so I understand. I understand how offense can function because you it, it, it's, it's interesting how you go to Sophie and you go to the hospital and call her Dr. Sophie. I'm not putting you on the spot. You call her Dr. Sophie because she studied medicine. And then you respect that title when you go to her office. And then because you are Christians, you come to the house of God when someone who has a doctorate also in his field, you call them my name because you know them, Oscar. So I ask the question, how come it's easy for you to give that designation to someone who spent years to study medicine and not, and not accord the same respect to someone who spent years to have the doctorate? Because guess what? The church wants to do everything to make you offended. It is Satan. Are you hearing me, church? It is Satan. So offense happens in different forms. He didn't say hello to me. I'm offended. You can imagine how Satan can split an entire congregation because someone did not say hello to you. I'm offended. 
The lady I see, I was singing off key. I'm offended. I'm not coming to the choir anymore. I'm offended. Apostle told me off. I'm offended. You see, the way that the church reacts to offense, if the church reacted or if the people in the church reacted to offense in their workplaces, there wouldn't be no job. You'd be fired after the offense. But it's very easy for us to come before God and be offended with our brothers and sisters. But you're not offended at your manager. So it almost looks like this can be regulated. But I spend the time to look at offense and I say it's actually an annoyance or resentment brought about by perceived insults to or disrespect for oneness. And I've got a scripture I want to share with you. One of the most, I looked at the scripture and I think that you and I need to hear this. I've got a couple of scriptures for you to read. But if you have a Bible, quickly, the book of Matthew chapter number three. I'll read everything. Say amen. 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 You know, my, my, my dad back in the day used to say something. He says, think before you talk. Because when you release words, you cannot take it back. And one of the things the devil will do is allow you, boil you up so much that you say the things that will never, ever, you will never. Do you know that there are some things you've said to people that have, that's registered in your minds? Even, even though they love you, they always remember what you say to them. So no matter how much, how angry you are, please, before you speak, think. Amen. In those days, John the Baptist came. I want to talk about John the Baptist that had a spirit called offense. A man of God whom prophetically he was to be the forerunner of Jesus. Isaiah prophesied that he was the one to make the way. So we knew his mandate. We knew his assignment. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, for those of you that want to find out Isaiah 40, in the wilderness, prepare the way, make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and, and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him, and where he baptized by him, and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come into his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham. From these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the roots of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming. Somebody say he who is coming. John the Baptist was the voice of one in the wilderness. One that everyone ran to. He was the most, he was, you could call it, he was the, uh, if, if Instagram was back in the day, he was the top dog on Instagram with all the followers. Everyone went to John the Baptist. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the scribes, the zealots, everyone went to him because he was the one who was to, he, he was the one that, that the old baptism thing, John the Baptist was the boss. He was the guy. But John the Baptist in verse number 11 would say something profound. He would say, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. He acknowledges the fact that someone greater than him was coming. Is mightier than I. Whose sanders I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with what? The Holy Spirit. John the Baptist says, I do not qualify to untie his shoes. That is embracing, by the way. When he spent the time to look at the Jewish culture, shoes are always symbolic of covenants. Finding the time of Ruth the Goel, the time of Joshua, even Moses, you know. Say, I am I'm, I'm unworthy to untie his shoe. I do not qualify. And some theologians believe that what well, the shoes is the most dusty part of the body, the legs and all that. And, and, and even with that dust, 
John the Baptist still wasn't able to qualify enough to take other souls. The Bible says in verse 12, his winnowing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff. But he went on. Whew. If you spend the time to look at the life of John the Baptist, he was born. He was actually the guy who was promised by the angel um, Elizabeth and say that she would bring forth a child and he would announce the coming Messiah. And, and John the Baptist's career over time was to announce the coming one. He was the annuncer. He was the forerunner. He was the one whom Isaiah spoke about that he would prepare the way. So when the Bible says that when the Pharisees came to him and said to him, are you the chosen one? Or, 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 or he said, no. Are you John the Baptist? Said, no. Are you, uh, Jeremiah said, no. What are you then? I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. And, and, and the, the Pharisees understood what he, who he was. He was that guy that was prophesied by Isaiah that he would open up the way for the Messiah to come. He was like the announcer. He was the announcer. So he was the one that will baptize the people and tell them, behold the Lamb of God that takes takes away the sins of the world. And when Jesus will come to be baptized, if you have the time in verse 13, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you come into me. But Jesus answered and said, permit it to be so for now. For thus it is fitting for, for us to fulfill the, our righteousness. Then he allowed him, Bible says, uh, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and saw the spirit of God descending like a dove alighting upon him the Bible says and suddenly a voice came from heaven so John the Baptist was the one who baptized Jesus for public ministry it's interesting how the Bible plays uh, lays his career he was the one who was born of a woman called Elizabeth his father Zechariah who was a priest at the temple and the purpose of his birth was to announce the coming king and John the Baptist was baptizing all the guys, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then Jesus came in the book of John to be baptized. And he looked at Jesus coming and he screamed, Black hole, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So John the Baptist understood who Jesus was. He understood his cousin's ministry. He understood Jesus was the coming one. He was coming to baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He understood Jesus' career. John the Baptist was good. He was born for what he was doing. Not like he had to be told. He knew that was his reason for his birth. And what did he do? Announce his ministry. That is Jesus, the one we have been waiting for. That is Jesus, the Messiah. That is Jesus who will take away the sins of the world. That is Jesus who is coming to bring judgment upon the unrighteous ones. That is Jesus whose blood will be shed on the cross. He understood the ministry of Jesus from birth, death, burial, and even resurrection to ascension. So he knew. He knew his ministry. John the Baptist had his own disciples. And at some point when his disciples left him to Jesus, he had no problem. He said, I decrease that he might increase. John the Baptist knew his place. He knew his one assignment, the voice of one. Are you hearing, church? He knew his, he knew his assignments. Now, let's flip over to a couple of chapters later, Matthew 11, a river verse number one, to understand the life of John, who was that prophet. Because Jesus will call John the Baptist a prophet. No one greater in the history of Israel who was as great as John the Baptist. That's what the Bible says in 11 verse number 1. That the same John the Baptist who called him the Messiah. That's what it said. Now it came to pass. When Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples. He departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison. Are you following church? John was in prison. He was about to be beheaded because he spoke about the right way of marriage. How dare you tell us how to marry? And they demanded his head on a platter. But the Bible says he was in prison at this time. He had spoken about Jesus' ministry, how he was the Lamb of God that took or takes away the sins of the world. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, are you following me? 
He's heard that Jesus was performing miracle signs and wonders. He's heard he was in prison, though, about the works of Jesus Christ. He sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you? Hold on. A couple of chapters ago, you said that he was the Lamb of God. You said that he was the one that would sandal you are unable to untie. You said that he was the one who would take away the sins of the world. Now for some reason, because he wasn't coming through for you, you deny who he is. Are you the coming one? Or do we look for one another? That's sarcasm. The same man who was burned for this assignment... The same man who was born to be the forerunner of Jesus. The same man who was born to announce his ministry, announced him in Jordan. But in prison was unable to identify him as the one he announced. Because he found himself in a prison situation. And it's very easy for you and I to come to church on Sunday and praise God in Jordan. But on Mondays to Saturdays, when we find ourselves in prison situations, we ask questions, is there really God? A lot of times we've asked God that question, are you sure there is God? And most of us can even deny our faith because we find ourselves in prison situations where you are stuck and bound and cannot move. And John the Baptist questioned him, are you sure you are the one? Or are you a clone? I, I, are you the one that we were waiting for? He began to reason with, with it himself. Did, did I not announce this guy? But you know the problem with John the Baptist there? How the spirit of offense works. Because when he announced Jesus, the Bible said the heaven was open. And God spoke, this is my beloved son. John the Baptist heard what God said about Jesus. But because he was in a very terrible place... He began to question the one that he was meant to forerun. Are you hearing me, church? What offense does? Offense will make you question the one who is meant to bless you. Many of you have not come into your fullness because the one who was meant to be your next, the, 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 you call him helper, you've cast them out. Because you, you are in a little prison, a little situation, a little something. And then you've cursed the people who are meant to be part of your prophetic destinies. Then go to the next verse. The Bible says in verse number four, Jesus answered and said to them, to the disciples, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. Go on, verse five. The blind see. You're asking me if I'm the, if I'm the, if I'm the Messiah or you wait for another. You are the one that announced me. One moment you are okay. The next moment you are angry because you're in prison. I don't know why you can't think straight because you find yourself in this prison situation. How dare you question my authority? How dare you question who I am? The next, the couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, a couple of days ago, you were there in Jordan telling the people I'm the best thing that happened to you since me. There's no other thing that happened to you to life. But now you are questioning me because you're in prison. How dare you? Even though John was older by six months. Bro, big bro. Giving senior, right? <laughs> How dare you? Then Jesus said to them, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up. So at this time, Jesus had raised the dead. Are you following me, church? I've given all the signs to show and prove that I am the Messiah. And you still question me because you find yourself in this tiny place. That's like some of us, right? We find ourselves in places where we can't move much. We begin to question our faith. I just want to leave, I want to leave this thing called Christianity. Everyone that left the faith left because God didn't come through for them to think. What's the purpose of serving a God that doesn't come through for me? I'm going to leave this thing. That's John the Baptist here. Jesus says to him, The dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Verse 6. That's what it says. Blessed is he. This is Jesus. Say, Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Are, are you following me, church? He knew that John was so offended. You are blessed for not being offended. But my question becomes, 
How did it transition from Jordan to prison? Your Jordan time is the time that everyone comes to you. Thank you. In fact, don't worry. Take it. Yeah. The Jordan time is the time that everyone comes to you. Everybody comes to you in Jordan. The Jordan time was the time where you have the crowd. Everyone came to him. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. Church was growing, right? Instagram was booming. His broken algorithm. Boy. It's eight Instagram. I think the biggest Instagram should be, I think it's The Rock. I don't know, yeah. But yeah, he, he has all the followers. Everyone came to John. The, he was the big boy in town. In, in Jordan, he could rebuke the people. In Jordan, everyone came. To, even the scribes and Pharisees, he called them brood of vipers. They still came. He was, the, he was the big boy. His church was mega. Choir, lit. Intercessors, lit. This guy was happy. This guy, he was, he was bro. He was bro. John the Baptist was so big that, they, you know, <laughs> John the Baptist, he was, he was the man. On top of that, he was, you know, had some locks. So he had some, yeah, let's leave that for another time. <laughs> yeah. So but John the Baptist was the guy. So in Jordan, ministry was good. In Jordan, he had everything he wanted. So it's very easy for us to see the good and the best of the best when we are in, when we are in our happy places. Oh, life is good. Jordan relationship is working. Jordan, you apply for the jobs, you get it. Jordan, you guess what? You're, you're, you're engaged, about to be married. Jordan is everything good. But would you keep the same testimony if God shifts you to the prison? Because in Jordan, he affirmed Christ's messiahship. In Jordan, he was an evangelist. Behold, the Lamb of God. Follow him. In Jordan, he had the space. Just like you today, you and I today, we have the space to call him God because things are working. The quality of your faith is not your response when things are bad, but when things are working. You thought it's the other way? No, let me say it again. The quality of your faith is not when things are bad, but when things are working. How much of God do you contemplate it when things are working well? Do you pray when everything works in your favor? I promise you, majority of believers do not pray when things are working for them. I've got what I want already. What's the point praying? So John the Baptist was the big boy in town and things are working. And then life happens where you have the breakup for no reason. The dude just woke up one morning and said it's done. Have you ever thought about it? You thank the Lord when he proposed. You question the Lord when he broke up. You said God is good. Ha! Ha! Finally, I've got my ring. God is so good. And then when he breaks up, he asks, is there really God? Are you following me, church? God is good when I got my house. My goodness, I've got a house. And then the mortgage comes down, then you lose your job, and you're asking, I'm not sure there is God. In your job, then it's very easy for you to testify. And that's why you have to be very careful how you treat people in your prisons. Because just because something is working in your Jordan doesn't mean that everyone is, everyone is in the same level of joy as you. Some people are in their prison as well. So be very careful how you treat them. But now these guys come to prison and the first thing you ask the Lord, are you sure you are God? Began to question the same one that you announced. And Jesus said to him, said to the disciples, how dare John? How dare you? There's, there are testimonies everywhere. I satisfy the requirement of the Messiah. I satisfy the requirement of Christ, the common one. And because you're offended. And John the Baptist is said, blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Are you following me, church? It is very easy for you and I to say stuff like, well, that was John. But the truth is that I want to dig out some things in your life. And hopefully by the grace of God, I will share as the Lord leads me. I want to address the things that you refuse to deal with. And then you have, you have normalized, you've normalized, you've normalized it. You've normalized offense. So much so that you're offended with people, but you don't know why you cannot forgive the people. Normalized it. I just can't forgive you, but I'm not angry at you, but I can't forgive you. 
Woman of God, I, 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 I want to give you a word of the Lord. If you lift up your hand. I know there are a lot of women there, but yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't get, I'm, I can't, I keep being distracted. Um, I'm going to give the word of the Lord. Hopefully I don't miss it because I'm tired. <laughs> um, are you, I'm calling you. Are you a woman of God? <laughs> yeah, the word of the Lord for you in the days to come. I see the Lord say it. I see like a halo on you. And I, the Lord says, glory shall abound. You know, I'm not sure what looks like tiredness, but glory shall, shall abound. I don't know. See, it's, there will be celebration coming to your, to your camp and to your house. You know, the Lord wouldn't let me go, but it's like a halo on you. Glory shall abound. Say amen. amen. Okay. Um, can I give you a word also? Can I give you a word? What's your name again? Mighty. 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 Okay. I like the name Mighty. I want to pray for someone who knows you all you, all you know. I'm not sure a connection with you and a lady called Jennifer. Yes, my spiritual mother. I'm praying for Jennifer's daughter called Tinuke. They call her Titi. Pick up your phone and call her now if you have a phone number. Jennifer Olarehebe. I don't know the woman. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a number? A number. Do you have a number? Do you have a phone number? Yes. Text her now. She's there. Tell her there's a daughter she has called T I N U K E Tinuke. Have you got a number? Text and I'm, I'm waiting. I won't go on, see. I must get it by fire by force. <laughs> Stop praying. You see? Okay. Is it because it's Nigeria? <laughs> I want to release the word of the Lord for the daughter. If you can... T I, they call her T T. It's Yoruba. She's Nigerian. It's T I N. Is it get it right? T I N U K E. T I N U K E. I'm speaking to a woman in Norway. Norway, Europe. She lives in Norway. I'm not sure if she does some system like a Deborah thing. Deborah. Call the woman. <laughs> if you can text her. Call her. If she, can, if she picks up. No, no, you speak to her. If she picks up. I don't want to go beyond. The Lord will not, will not let me go to pray for a daughter. There's a girl called Tin, okay? Pray for her. Apologize, church. That's what happens to prophetic churches. Stop my time. Stop my time. If, if you can get through to her, it's fine. It's fine. If I can get through her, I, I, I'm seeing the lady there, and I'm seeing, um, it's almost like a day rig big bay, something like that. A-D-E-R-I-G-B-E, something like that. She's a daughter of Tinuke. <sighs> yeah, just spell it and then, um, yeah, Tinuke. You have to, she has to pray and stand in the gap for her daughter. What's her name? Another one is to look. I'm hearing it so loud and clear, and I'm not. I'm not going until I deal with what I want to deal with. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Who has? Is this your seat? No, sir. Uh, no. Can I sit here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what is? Uh, what is coffee with Jesus? Is coffee something? Coffee? Coffee with Jesus is, is my first prayer. Okay. It's when I received the, from the Lord the thing from NHS. Okay. Call her one more time. Yes, sir. Don't be afraid. It's okay. Take your time. She's so she's scared. She's shaking. <laughs> All right. If you can call her, I want, I want to pray for. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, guys. You know, we do, we do trust funny sometimes. Yeah. It's ringing. She's not picking. Because she's in Nigeria. No network. No, 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 no. Maybe because she's a... There's no snapper. Snapper. No lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hopefully uh, oh, she picks. And when she picks during service, let me know. I, I'm struggling to move on until I, I deliver the word to the daughter. Yeah? And hopefully by the grace of God, we'll make this work. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. I, I couldn't move on until the Lord. All right. So John the Baptist, crit- so, no, no, no. John the Baptist questioned Jesus' ministry because of offense. And I want you to think about it. How many people have caused you offense? Not the ones you've offended, though, has caused you offense. And let's, let's ask a question. It might not be in church. Is there anyone, you can, can play, is that 92? That's too much. Is there anyone in your life? Now, let, let, let's, let's, let's do this. Is there anybody here that you are angry at someone, not necessarily in church, you are offended at someone and they don't know you're offended at them, with them. Anyone here? Patrick? <laughs> Anyone? It's, not, it's okay. All right, one. That's, that's a good one. Two. And they don't know. Anyone? Three. Yeah, let's go. Four. No, no condemnation. No, the camera is not on you. No on you. It's fine. How many of you, hear me, how many of you feel like someone has offended you, but they haven't apologized to you? More hands. Okay, wow. The entire church. Okay, they've offended. Okay. Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. There's a blessing that comes to people that do not take offense at me. Meaning, therefore, that even though I wrong them, their ability to stay unoffended, there was a blessing. Therefore, there were people that has held, or not, not people, you have held your blessings by responding to offense. I'll say it again. Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Therefore, many of you have not come into your full blessing because of offense. You've allowed people to control your blessings. You haven't entered what God has promised you because you are angry at someone or offended at someone. Are you following church? And it's interesting how this man, but I do not know if, if John the Baptist would have survived, but his head was chopped. chopped. I do not know. I don't want to infer or, or bring my conjectures. But I'm just thinking that John the Baptist beheaded, was beheaded with offense. He died offended. His head was caught offended, angry. You want to know the funny, you want to know the funny thing, really? If we spend the time some experts believe, though, there might be some play on words on discipleship. If you spend the time, the two disciples he sent became Jesus' disciples. <laughs> so he lost his disciples and was beheaded because of offense. Offense made him speak bad of Jesus to his disciples and they left him. You know why? Because the disciples were there when he was healing Jesus. And now he's bad Jesus before them. He was there. They were there when he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And now in their private meeting, he was saying to them, who, do, who does he think he is? Is he the only one in town? Just because he hates some, some people, does he think he's the Messiah? That guy, he's too, much, he's too proud. He's too proud. Don't, don't, he's too proud. I can't, so he, for one reason, when he did all the announcements, the guys were like, Mom, our father is good. The next day, he condemned the one he announced. And guess what the disciples did? They left him. Offense. The man died without reconciliation. Even Jesus said that John the Baptist is the greatest of all. But offense. He didn't make reconciliation. Are you hearing me? I'm not even talking about anger today. God. God called Moses the meekest man. But Moses never entered the promise because of anger. You don't understand. Moses was the meekest man on earth. But the meekest man got angry that missed his blessings. The meekest man. Are you, are you understanding? That one time moment, that offense that you refuse to, and you wonder why things are chopped off in your life. And the worst thing is to be offended with the people God has placed in your life as prophetic destiny helpers. People God has put in your life to lead you into your prophetic destiny. You're angry and offended. Offended that they texted you. They didn't put, you know... You know, let me tell you how offense works. 
Even in the local church. I, even Peter told me one time to be very careful. Are you? I, love, I love our church members. I love them. I love to celebrate church members. I love to. I love it. People got offended because for some, you know, you know when some, when, because you just forgot to reshare the post. Someone was offended because you, you can't imagine having too many happy birthdays, happy birthdays, happy, and because you forgot to just repost one, they took offense. Or maybe you are so tired, maybe you're flying from country to country, and you don't know whose birthday it is. And then, back in the day, I used to repost everybody's birthday. I stopped it. I had to stop it. Because people felt entitled. That apostle must post me, I must not post you. But, but what am I trying to say? They got offended and began to form a bit of, you know, insolence and anger. Because for some posts, you put the hand like this, right? And for some posts, you put the hand. Someone told me, apostle, you gave me hand, not heart. It's in this church. But, but, but guess what? See, but, but what am I saying that? See what, see what I'm saying? Now? A lot of times, is she there? Okay. Let's hold on now. If I, if I miss it, it's your fault. Okay. Hello. Is she on speaker? Um, what a great honor. One second. Um, how, how are you, woman of God? I'm good, sir. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, preaching at the, I, I'm preaching at the moment. I'm just wondering, who is Tinuke? She's my daughter. Okay, that's all. That's all. I'll call you back later. I'll give, I'll give, I'll give instruction. Okay. Uh, so what, what I'll say, calm down. This is normal. This is normal. This is basic. Listen, these, these are basic stuff. Nah, these are basic stuff. This thing that's like, nah, you want to let come on Saturday, we'll teach you. <laughs> These are basic stuff. So I, I'll, at the end of service, let, speak to me at the end of service, I'll give you a word. Okay? At the end of service, I'll talk to you. Yes, okay. So, so John the Baptist of, what, what was that? <laughs> Hats and hand. <laughs> the woman trying, but see what I'm trying to say is this. For a lot of you, you might think it's just one of those things. That is that is what the devil is looking for. An opportunity to turn offense to a spirit. An opportunity to turn offense to a spirit. Opportunity. So most of this became a spirit of offense. And every time you're offended, this is the part, you may not understand. Every time you're offended at someone within the body of Christ, they have something you need. Let me say it again. Every time you're offended at someone, God has put in their mouth the key to your next level. The purpose for the spirit of offense is to stifle the one whom God has called to you for your next season. In fact, you, you're offended with the man or the woman God has placed in your life to open doors for you. Are you hearing me, church? That's what the devil does. And make sure he does everything to silence the one who has the voice in your life. That's offense. The one you're offended with or at. Listen, you know, you know one of the things you need to realize, yeah? A snippet how God works. God oftentimes, majority of the time, will not come through me. He will come through people. Maybe all the laying of hands I've been doing from time, maybe the anointing is not on me to break that yoke. It might be on the person sitting close to God as preordained them before the foundations of the world that their assignment is to forerun you. Yeah. Huh. Your pastor is not your only forerunner. The body of Christ collectively, we are forerunners. Yeah. Meaning, therefore, that your next season may be close, maybe in someone's hand close to you. Yeah. And pastor has put oil, engine oil, red oil, yeah. coconut oil. Yeah. Every oil on your head, not chain is breaking. Because you have refused to acknowledge the one that God had predestined to be the destiny help at your next season. But what offense does, offense makes you see them as enemies. Whenever you start getting jealous of someone, they have your blessings in their hands. 
You didn't hear me? Whenever you start being envious of someone, God has placed them to help you. Because the devil would always paint black someone who God has called light. So at the moment you feel like she's detesting me, listen, listen, that person that's detesting you, they have the key to your next level. Satan will sow a seed of discord that you begin to make enemies with people whom God has called to be part of your destiny. Are you hearing me, church? It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Some of you are still, ups- ups- still-, are still offended. At what- I mean, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> I wish you understood how the supernatural works. I wish you understood how the supernatural works. I wish you understood what happens in the realms of the spirit. How the devil works. I wish you understood what happens in the transaction in the spirit. Now what the devil does, and you're wondering, shall I say this part? You're wondering why you don't have the next job. You are feeling that your last boss. Yes, you broke your heart and you're struggling for the next relationship because you're still offended at your ex. This thing is their spirit. I qualify for this role. I've applied for this job. Nothing is coming through because he got offended by your last boss because he fired you. I promise you, let them go and watch God open doors for you. You think this is just natural? You got angry at your previous job, cursed your boss out, and offended with them, and now you're looking for the next job? Even in the natural realms, when you go for a new job, they ask your previous manager. In the natural realm, then in the, they don't do it in the spirit. In the natural realm, you go to your new job, they ask, what, what's the name again? They ask for whatever it is, reference. You don't know there's reference in the spirit too. I'm not joking. You don't know there's reference spirit too. You're asking, I need a tall, dark answer with, that works in JP Morgan. You just cost one last month. <laughs> reference, there's reference, I promise you. I know, no, no, this is the part. It, it, it can be very sensitive. Hear me? I know he broke your heart. But you cannot be married and offended with an ex. Come on, church. You're married, but still offended with an ex. He broke your heart 22 years ago. And you're still angry. And, 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 and you think that's not the spirit of offense. You're married with kids. With your... And you see the guy, you feel funny, you're angry. When you should be thankful that I had to break up with you to find my Mr. Man. But you're upset. Are your ex. And you want the next. Offense. Offense will steal from you what God has for you. How can a man be the greatest and lose lose his head? Offense in prison. Let me tell you what offense does. Even in the local church, it is offense that makes sometimes your prophet's prayer don't work for you. Because you are offended at what they did to you or with you. And you want your prayers to work. Isaiah says, it's like putting coal on your head. Some of you need to forgive. <laughs> oh, Lord. If you understand how this works, that many of us believers, we are still held back because we are offended at our parents. Our work colleagues. Offense is spirit. And whenever you are offended at someone, they have the keys to your neck. I promise you, the next, your next level... If you learn to release people, you see how to release. See what the Bible says. Right? We pray our Lord's prayer. Let's pray. One to go. Hold on. You want him to forgive us, if, but you haven't forgiven. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive. You haven't done your part. You're asking him to do his part. And the problem is that Jesus doesn't like to share. 
Because trust me, whoever you are offended with or at, you have them in your heart. And it doesn't share. But I want to quickly do something before I go. I want to, I, I, I try to be very practical today because this is pr practical, you know, training. And I'm going to pray with a few, few of you before we go today. And I put here, what are the practical ways to deal with offense? But it's one thing to talk about the spirit, then we must look at the practical ways. Are you hearing? Yes, Just pray for you. I don't want to call your name out. Someone that was offended with a mom. This was on Wednesday last week. Just pray that you hear this word. Because the word is really fighting you right now. Pray that you hear the word of the Lord. All right. Practical ways to deal with offense. Number one. Reflect before. Somebody say reflect. Let me tell you. One of the ways to deal with offense is to look at the good of the person, not the bad. Have you not noticed? Everyone, everyone who lives in a church always talks bad about the bad the church does. They never talk about the good. Even in your personal lives, before you cut off someone off and tell them how bad they are, reflect before you react. But don't reflect on their bad. Reflect on the good things they did to you. Because the truth is that most of us don't want to share the narrative. We, it's when we are fighting people, we we'll not start sharing the bad things. They, oh, this is so bad, so bad. But you didn't tell the people when they booked you Ubers every single Sunday. You didn't tell the people how they came through for you when you had no food on your table. You didn't tell the people how you asked them for a tenner when things were hard for you. You didn't tell the people how they gave you your shoulders when you were crying. But the problem with people, once they are offended, they forget the good, on, good in people. So before you react, reflect. reflect. Let's, let's, let's look at James 1.19. Before you react, reflect. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to what? Yeah. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to right. calm down. <laughs> Can we do it? <laughs> Convert it to prayer. Before you react, reflect. I'm angry at Georgia. But before I get angry at Georgia, I'm thinking, what, what about the good she's done for me? She's a nice girl. Or maybe she did that because ABC. Or maybe she was not in the best frame of mind. Or things we are hard on that Sunday. Try to give them the benefit of the doubt. You have to reflect. Because if you, there were people that will react before. You know, foolishness is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Conclusion without investigation. It's foolery. And even if someone has done something that is not in their character, that's the most reason why you have to sit back and think, why did they do what they did? Always reflect before you react. Before you cut them off. Because there was some that needs to be cut off for real. Some people are poison. But before you cut, be reflect. Reflect on, be slow to speech. Calm down. Calm down. It, it, it gets to a point in your Christian faith that peace is better than right. Sometimes I let go, not because I'm wrong, but because I value my relationship than my intellect. I'd rather you in my life than try to prove that I'm right. Somebody say, reflect before you react. It's the Bible says, so, brethren, be, 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 let every man be swift to hear. Basically, you know, I read a book one time. It says, you have two ears and one mouth. Because you're listening twice as you speak. Before you speak one, listen twice. Two, listen two times. So you have to hear from here and hear from me, then speak. Are you hearing me? It will help you. I'm offended. Before you're offended, calm down. Why? What's the reason why? Why do people do what they do? And why, do people, are, why are people out of character? What's the reason behind the way they do things? Because anytime you give the devil a room, it takes an entire mansion. It's the spirit. And you do everything in your power not to allow this spirit to work. Number two. Give me number two. Communicate openly and with honesty. I'll come to that scripture. Communicate openly. When I mean openly, it's called paresa. Paresa means not holding back. Don't tell them part of it this week and say that's all. And are you offended because you didn't complete the entire narrative? So therefore, you must create a space for open communication. 
Are you hearing? And be honest with this. I'm angry. Don't be telling them, actually, I'm not really hot. No, you're angry. Tell them you're angry. At this age, will they beat you? <laughs> they won't beat you at this age. I'm telling you, I'm not happy with what you did. So communicate openly. Make it open. Because the things that you don't communicate will become a vile. It's insidious. The things you don't communicate, you keep it. And that's the problem. Most of you, are, you, you've, you you're, you're so full because you're so angry. You've piled up anger. You've piled up anger because you've refused to share how you feel. For some people, they don't know how to, they don't know how to address it. Other people, they want to justify the reason why they're angry. So they name it, number one, she cost me this day. Number two, you, you, your heart has numbers. You've itemized who. Can you imagine some people, you, you are, listen, do, you, do, do you know the level of torture? To be angry at people that don't know you're angry at them. I mean, I'm playing with you every single day and you're angry. Why are you stressing yourself? Because I don't know I've offended you and you know I've offended you. You're not telling me and then you're boiling when I see you. And sometimes I ask you, why are you not smiling? To give him, give him a wahala. <laughs> Communicate and be honest. I'm not happy because ABC. Ephesians 4.25. Let's what the Bible says. The context in scripture. Therefore, putting away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. Say, say speak truth. With your neighbor. With your neighbor. For we are members of one. Speak the truth. I'd, I'd rather free myself from how I feel than thinking in my mind you won't like what I say. Are you hearing? Speak, be open about it. Go for a one-to-one. -one. The Bible gives us how to speak to people that we, that we are offended with. Go to them one-on-one -on -one and then call people. Be, ask them, I want to have a word with you. If they refuse for you, then they're about protocols to follow. Are you hearing? Communicate openly and with honesty. Number three. Uh, practice. Do you know why people get offended? I didn't say that. She said it. Active. Not, not, ba, 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 ba. You do it a lot. Before you learn, ba, 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 ba. No, 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 but, but, but. in fact, I didn't put this. Just give me now. It just came to my head now. Look, look five. Look five. Someone is telling you how they feel. You're stopping them. No, 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 no. Baby. You're, you're, you're stopping them. I don't like how you do but I don't like how you do No, 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 no. no, no. It means I don't like how I talk to me. Like, I'm not even landed. I don't like how you spoke to me. I don't like how you spoke to me, too. Like, well, I'm, no, no, no. But, but they, they, they don't listen. I know people don't listen. From a post I posted about tongues. I do, people don't listen. People don't listen. People don't listen. I know. But the Bible says that as soon as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of the Lord, he stood by the lake of Galilee, verse, verse number two. Let's go quickly. And, and, and saw the boat standing by the I preached about it before, verse number three. You know. And, and then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put a little from the land. And he sowed then and taught the multitude from the boat, number four. Said, and when he had what? He said, he stopped speaking. Let him stop speaking. He must understand when to respect people and listen. Not listen to rebut. Listen to hear their story or the side of their story. Some people just want to talk back to rebut what you're saying. Oh, this, this, there's a spirit called but. Yeah, but. How can you say yeah, but? Like people on Instagram, they'll tell you, I hear what you're saying, but... How can you hear and bust him at the same time? And you're negating what I'm saying and you're saying you hear. You don't hear. Somebody say active listening. You must learn. Let's the, go back again. Let's look, look at the scripture. You must learn to listen. Act, because if you don't listen, you'll be offended. If the devil wants to mess you up, no matter how someone speaks and communicates, it will block your hear from listening. You only hear what you want to hear. And people hear what they want to hear. People hear, what, people hear what they want to hear. I promise you one time on Facebook. <laughs> I, this is not a lie. I'm, I'm serious. I put Jesus is Lord. Someone says how? <laughs> and they're, they're a pastor. They say explain how. Show me in scripture. You know, you know what I do? Okay. 
That's all. Okay. Now go back again to the active listening part. See, my ears must hear. Even when Jesus wrote the letters to the seven churches, what did he say? All of them. He who has that here. Here, here, here. So people's ears are anointed for gossip. But they don't hear the word of God. You know, there are people that have the gift of eavesdropping. They can hear you from here, from, from here to my land. They will hear what people are saying in my land. You know when Elisha was hearing what the king was saying in his chamber, the Syrian king? Some of you are like that. You can hear from here to Jericho. But when someone is giving you the word of God, you don't hear the word of the Lord in church, but you hear, Apostle, huh, I hear what, 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 what? <laughs> Proverbs 18, 13, quickly. He who answers a matter before he hears it. Because some of you are like that. You answer before you hear. Because there's a presumption. Some people already have answers waiting for the questions. When they come here, I'll give them here. When they come. So you, you have different, you have, you have different parts. They come here, I give them here. They come here, I give them here. They come here, I give them here. So yeah, I'm well equipped. I'm, I'm, you're, you're the old armor of God. <laughs> he who answers a matter before he hears it, it's a fully and a shame. That's, that's what, that's, it's foolery. Condemnation without investigation. It's foolery. That's why I tell people always hear to the, 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 always hear the other side of the story. Never judge a matter. When people come, they know me. They don't come to me. I give them. Bah. Okay, what you're telling me now? Will it say? Will it, will it say it publicly? No, don't tell me. Pastor, I'm just telling you right now for your yes. Don't just tell me. You're reporting somebody. Maybe I'm warning you guys that don't come to me about people, unless you bring them together. Don't come and report anyone to me. You must come with them. I will not. I will not listen. My ass, which is here, I will not listen. People have come, apostle, yeah, hey, 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 hey. Oh, hold it, hold it. You want to talk, bring them, bring, bring them. Oh, please, no, don't just tell me, bring them and use the same energy. <laughs> it's true. And I want to put both of you together. No, I'm not really angry. No, no, what? <laughs> you were shouting. No, I wasn't really just that. That's my voice. He who answers the matter before he hears it is a fool. You know? And that's the reason why even when you are, you are trying to um, advocate a matter, don't give your judgment on one perspective. Hear both sides of the story. You don't have to inherit. And that's the problem. Just because they're your friends doesn't mean they're right. And it's okay to tell your friend you're out of order. Let's be Christians for real, right? I love you, but actually you're actually out of order. And many of you, I don't want this. Don't, don't inherit people's enemies. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because what, what, a lot of, what we don't know a lot of time is that the enemy that you're inheriting might be that person God has destined for you. They've done nothing to you. You just, you just hate them. Why, why? You don't even know the story because your enemy's enemy is your enemy. Well, your friend's enemy. It doesn't make sense. In the kingdom, I'm not talking to you because my friend is not talking to you. How, how does that work? People got so born again and became so occultic. The next one, quick, let's go. Four. Seek forgiveness and offer. Forgiveness. Say, seek forgiveness. seek forgiveness. Now, this is the part you want to hear. What does this really mean to seek forgiveness? It means that it doesn't matter who, who it doesn't matter who is at fault. It's maturity to apologize for people that hurt, that hurt you. I don't have to, and that's for me, I don't have to wait for you to acknowledge what you've done before I talk about it. I will go to you and say, please forgive me for being angry at me. Now, there are different types of people, right? There are those that can put something in their mind for 20 years. They can't, they can't, <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. They, they'll be angry for, with someone that they laugh with. They will eat and they're angry with someone. I don't know how you sleep. Ask my wife. I can't sleep. I must call you. We must talk. I'll be rolling in bed. I, we must talk. I don't care how late it is, bro. We have to talk. Because I can't sleep if you're sleeping. Let's talk about this stuff. <laughs> Seek forgiveness. 
It won't lessen you. I'm sorry we fell out. Maybe it's mis- miscommunication, some misunderstanding. I never intended to fall out with you. I'm sorry. It's not give you gray hair. It's not take from your bank account. It doesn't show that you are, you are, you are nothing. I'm sorry. I apologize. Maybe we started on the wrong note. I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry. Whether they forgive you or not, that's no longer your problem. Your responsibility is to offer it. Are you hearing? Let's, let's look at, you know, um, Matthew 25. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, <laughs> I was going to say, sleep, still leave it there. <laughs> no, let's, let's read the Bible. If you bring your gift to the altar and there remem- and, and they remember your brother has something against you, go verse number 24. Verse 24. Le- leave it. So, you can go back, but leave the gift. We need... <laughs> But the Bible, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, leave it. Now, if the Bible says, take your gift back, uh, Lord God, we have to review this scripture. It says, leave the gift. So it's trying to say, you come to the church and you present gifts to the church. He receives your sacrifice. How about your heart? It says, leave it. Give there, there before the altar and go your way first. Be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer the gift. Hold on one moment. The gift is there, but it's not offered. I talk about that's one another day, by the way. What it means to bring an offering to the Lord, to give and to, to bring. Mm. Do I do that today? Not time. No, 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 no. Not time. Not time. And that's what the Bible talks about, you know. <laughs> no time. <laughs> Let's time. Let's go to the next, the next, the next verse, um, scripture. Next scripture. Is it the next one? Bear with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also may do, right? Must. So you must because Christ did. Are you hearing me, church? So as Christ did, you must do. You must forgive. Somebody say, I must forgive. And the truth, everyone is redeemable. Everybody. Everybody makes a mistake. Everybody. Very easy for us to judge Judas. How about Peter? Very easy, right? You sold him. You denied him three times. Very easy for us to fall. You know, let's go to the next one because of time. Ah. Okay. And now we're talking about offense, right? Self boundaries. When necessary. Let me explain this part. It is okay to protect you. It is okay to understand nuisance, the difference between nuisance and a sadist. It is very okay to protect yourself from unnecessary wahala. If someone has become Yeah, protect yourself. <laughs> and the reason why is a lot of times people give us reason to act the way we act. There are people that just get on your like, yeah. you know. But sometimes you need, you need to set your boundaries. If, if you con- continually do what I don't like, I have to, I have to, I have to give him give a boundary. I don't like it. I don't like it. You keep doing the same thing, and I've told you I don't like what you do. You keep doing it every single time. Then I want to respect, but respect myself. Hi, I love you. The Lord bless you. Now, the Lord can bless you from a distance. Yeah. The Lord bless you. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want, because you do the thing that I don't like. Let's look at Matthew 18, 15 to 17. Quickly. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell them his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you've gained a brother. Hold on, stay there, stay there. So you've offended me. I'm telling you, you've done ABC. And if you acknowledge your fault, I've gained you as a brother. Are you hearing? But go to the next verse. But. 
if you were not here, take with you one or two more witnesses, by the way, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So I'm telling you, I don't like what you do. You've been very hard. I'm going to go with one or two persons. And then if you still say no, just keep going for 17. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. See, one on one, one one, two people to or three people to one, you still say no. Then tell the church. But if you still, even, if, you know, there are people like this. You tell them one on one, they say it's a lie. You bring your presbytery, they say it's a lie. You bring your entire church, they say it's a lie. Those ones, they call them anathema. The word anathema means let's communicate them. So also Paul got so frustrated, he said, mark that one. Don't let them enter the church. In fact, I give them to Satan. But what the word give to Satan, but what it means really, it means outside of the church's covering. That's what it means. Everyone that's part of the church, you're under the church's covering and grace. What Paul did was excommunicate, it's called anathema. It was communicated means that you're no longer under the church's covering. And see, I, I, I give you to Satan to deal with. There's something about being under the church's covering. And the Bible says, if you see this to the church, let him be to you like a hidden. Do you know what the task collector was back in the day? A terrible job. Every Jewish person hated that job. Because you took money and gave to Romans. Forbidden people. All right, the next one. Is that the last one? Oh. Focus on what? Not just what? Because some people, let us resolve it. And they are still angry. Reconciliation means that we've come to the root of this stuff and let's reconcile. Not just resolve it. Let's reconcile. Are you here in church? Let's reconcile the matter. Not just let's just resolve it for the sake of the church. No, let's reconcile the stuff. You know? And, and I say this because this is what Jesus, Jesus did not just resolve the work of salvation. He reconciled us to the Father. He could have said, well, my blood is enough, that's all, live your life. But he went beyond that resolution into reconciliation. Look at the scripture that we in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a what? It's a ministry. That's the ministry of resolution. You're not a vector. It's reconciliation. Somebody say reconciliation. Reconcile. Just as Jesus reconciled us back to God as bridges, we also are bridges to members of the body of Christ. Not Pepe. Because there are many Pepe them gang. Pepe. Two people are fighting. Instead of you to say stuff like, how do I reconcile you? Don't just be the one bringing resolve. Reconcile them together. Oh yeah, you go your way, you go your way. That's not stuff like that. You're resolving, reconcile them. It's a ministry. It's an advocatory ministry. You're a mediator for a reason, a middleman. Reconcile. So think about it. Is there someone that is I'm meant to be speaking to you, speaking with? I have to reconcile. And the reason why I'm putting all these things here, but these things are what the devil looks look out for. And once he finds that weak, weak link, he comes in. And have you recognized that the more you are angry at someone, the more everything you do pisses you off? Oh. Oh. Don't, don't allow the devil to take you to that space where even, 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 there were people, there were people who rather die than ask for help for someone who has what they, what they need. Over my dead body, I will never take from you. There are people like that. They've made up their mind that they're so offended. They're so offended. There are people, I promise you, if, you, if you, the Lord opened your eyes to see them, they're like wolverines. When they're angry, you see their hand. <laughs> you know. He says, Spirit, I will end with something. I think I had the last one or something. And this is the part I want to talk about, the last one, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, let's go to the last one, or this one. Let go. Let God. Jesus says, love your enemies. I don't like that scripture sometimes. I want to knock them out. I promise you that if I show you the people I want to knock out. 
<laughs> Jesus says, love your enemies. I'm like, I should love this guy. Bro, do you know what this guy's done? He said, and pray for those who despisefully use you. Like, I should pray for someone who is using me. To use me more. <laughs> the, so, the quality of your Christian faith is not a response to those who love you. Because it's very easy for us to love those who love us. But how about loving those who don't love you? That's what determines your faith. Somebody say, let go. Let God. I promise you, you will never mature in your Christian journey if you don't know how to love on people who may not even like you. I flowed prophetically. I have a secret how I flow. And I've made a secret public. It's not being a sorcerer. Nah, or psychic, no. I don't see because I pray too much. Mm -mm. I'm not the greatest praying warrior, no. I don't see because I studied the Bible too much, no. I don't see because I know stuff, no. I don't know about any other person. The quality of my sight is directly proportional to the quality of my love. I see because I love. I'll say it again. For those of you that are saying, yeah, we'll go again. I'll say it again. I understand that I cannot say into a dimension for people if I don't love them. If you press in into a dimension without love, it's called witchcraft. It's easy. This thing, there is, this is, I'm not even joking. This is basic stuff. Now, seeing in the spirit... We live there. Yeah. I don't pray to be there. I live there. So, calling out your stuff. This is this is this is this is kindergarten. This is this is small thing. This is small thing. God will test you. Ah, you want to see <laughs> the people that you he will he will show you. God will show you the details of people that don't like you. And they will see how you manage it. Do you know what it means to hawk someone and love someone who is backbiting you? Ah! You've seen their text. I was, I was, um, I woke up, you know, I, was, I was having a, uh, an event and I called a number. Of, I don't want to call, call the number. Anyway, long story short. Someone came and gave me a hug. Apostle! <laughs> love you, man, Apostle! <laughs> and I hugged him. Hugged him. Love you, bro. Love you, man. Love you. Man. You always, man. Man. Apostle, man. We have, I need to tap from your grace. We love and hugged. I loved him. Hugged him. And they were smiling with him. Come, Georgia, come. It's not Georgia, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> love on him. And we're together. I'm like, yeah, phone. Bring your phone. Phone. We're together. I'm like, you know. Say, I just told the guy, I say, the, the 12th message, the 12th person on your phone list, yeah, scroll down, scroll down, yes. You spoke to somebody, A, B, C, da, 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 this is what you said, da, 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 da. Uh, I said, the Lord bless you. <laughs> Apostle, Apostle. These things, what am I trying to say? I refuse to allow anything called blinders. Offense. Offense. Have you ever wondered why? Oh, let's leave this thing for another day. Uh, you know? But I want to say that if you allow the spirit of offense take hold of your life, you will lose what God has for you. I promise you. I could have been offended at different things. I promise I could have been offended at different things. Ah, ah, yeah. Ah, ah. Even with the whole online, uh, the whole tongues thing, someone inboxed me and said to me, I should go and pray for Pastor to lay to me if I don't have the gift of tongues. See, hey. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. You know, what am I trying to say? I refuse to allow this thing because when this thing comes into your space, John the Baptist lost it because he was angry. And as I end, thank you. He knows his assignment. <laughs> Hope you're not offended. <laughs> as, as I end with this, but, but hear me, this might be very basic for you. 
But this will be deliverance. Why? Because for some of you, the problem is not your resume, it's not your CV. You've tweaked your CV back and forth. How did you leave your previous job? You got offended at your, at your manager, at your supervisor. It's the spirit that says because she's done this here, she won't get this there. Some of you need to forgive your managers and forgive your colleagues. Are you hearing me? It might look simple. It's a spiritual principle. Apostle, I've done everything. I've, some of you, you've, 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 You've tweaked your CV, even mistakenly put, I'm a medical doctor. You've tweaked it. As in, you've, you've applied for other roles. You are an engineer and a doctor at the same time. You've, your CV is tweaked. You, you've, tweaked you've tweaked your CV so much so that your CV looks like it's the program. But I still don't have the job. And we've prayed and prayed and prayed. I don't know what's going on. Perhaps it could be that's a spirit of offense that you haven't dealt with from your previous manager. Are you angry at them because they told you for coming late? Just coming late to work, you got offended. Some of you have no, you, some of you got upset, or you are angry at your manager for telling you, you, you are you late to work? Even, even with money, I don't have, I don't, I don't, I don't but you, but you're offended as someone whom God would use to open doors for you. Offense. Offended that they didn't acknowledge you as what? Offended at your father for favoritism. They don't love me. I'm offended. And, and you want another problem? I feel like saying this as I see them here. If you're offended at your biological father, you won't find the joy in your spiritual father. Because your spiritual father is not, is not the substitute for your biological father. Because what you're offended at in your biological father, you'll, you'll be looking for your spiritual father. That may not have the capacity to cover your own dimension. But I promise you, if you forgive those people, that everything that you need from the other part will come straight to you. Are you hearing? Even in relationship. I don't have a boyfriend. I've been waiting. I've been waiting, waiting. You're still offended at your ex. And you're asking for a next. I'm angry how you broke up with me. And then you haven't moved on. It's a spirit. How can one man who was born for one assignment, acknowledge him as the Messiah, yet deny him as one because of offense. Are you hearing me? Some of you are offended for no, no just cause. You're offended because your name was not called out. Offended because you were not put among the numbers. Offended because for, for some whatever reason it is, the devil is looking for that one spot. To capitalize. But you want to know the truth? You have every reason to be. But I know better. I forgive you not because you've apologized. But because I know that if I don't do that, I allow the enemy to have the space. Are you hearing me? This thing is for real. I could have come and preached a very deep sermon. It's, no. But I realize that's one thing we have in the body of Christ today. You know? In this country, I won't call names. There are people that don't like me. They're offended only because of what God is doing through me. Me, small boy. What do I even know? They just, they don't, I, we don't like you. What have I done to you, bro? But I'm not going to not like you because you don't like me. But I understand my boundaries. You know, I'm not trying to hide my... I hear. I see. I'm a prophet. Leave the apostle one corner. I will, I'm a born prophet. Born. Apostle was conferred on me from apostolic work. I was, I'm a born one. I hear things. I see things. Shalom drove me to, we drove to um, Caleb's. We loved it. Caleb's a strong man. And it was coming. I think it was Miranda was asking me the question. She was asking, do you always hear? Or some the question about that. And I said to her that I'm praying to God not to hear the way I hear. 
I'm asking God to take some sight. I don't want to see as clear as I see. You know the reason why? If I see the way I see, and I allow the Lord speak to me the way he speaks to me, everyone will be an enemy and a suspect. So in order to maintain my humanity, I have to tell God, block some stuff. Are you, are you understanding? Because I will see your intent. I'm that gifted, yes. So be careful. I'm joking. <laughs> what am I trying to say? That there are things I've seen in people. I've seen it. <sighs> can, can I speak to you as, as your apostle? I've seen you angry and say some stuff under your breath. But I have to love you beyond that. But like if I was to pray for you, how you treat me sometimes in your mind, I won't lay my hands on you. I refuse to allow, I refuse to allow offense. Because the truth, that what you don't understand is that when people's prayers are not answered, after God is the pastor, they get angry at God and then they come. Do you, know, do, do you, do you not understand how Ken kid Abel? He was angry at God and killed the next person. Many of you cannot kill God, so you are striking me. I know, I know you don't like it. But I refuse to allow offense. It's offense that makes pastors burnt out. And quit the job. I'm not doing this stuff. Because they keep praying for people. Who are, how can you be offended at your pastor? But you think of it now. Think of it. It happens. I'm, I'm, I believe you guys. You know, are you offended with me? Only one person. <laughs> Lord, expose your hearts. <laughs> But you see, and, and we need to recognize that. I want you for what your heads are bowed. You don't have to stand up for this one. This is a one-to-one -one reflection. Some of you are angry that someone did pick up your phone calls or respond to your text messages. Some of you are angry at your parents for not doing what you want them to do. And I want you to just spend, while your eyes are closed, reflect on, do I have offense in my heart? It's you and God. I'm not going to ask you to lift up your hands. No. Think of someone. Who am I offended with? Just like John the Baptist who lost it because he was angry at the one that he was called to for on. I'm not perfect. I've been offended a lot of times. I've been offended many times. But I refuse to allow the offense to control me. Think about it. And now, release them. My dad was not there for me. I'm offended. Release him. My mom cussed me out. Release her. My last relationship was terrible. I hate him. I hate her. Release them. Is the time. It is a spirit. And this spirit will stop everything that God has for you. Come on. I'll drop this microphone in the next three, minutes, four minutes. Or maybe five. But eight o'clock, I'll drop the microphone. But it's the time to release it. Release them. Release them. And it's okay to cry it out. Exhale. <sighs> release them out. The one that you feel is unforgivable. Release them. Release them. Release them. Release them. I forgive them. Not because I'm wrong. Or the, I forgive them because I know what he does. It will take hold of your entire life. Release them. Release them. You've got two minutes to do this. Release them. It's not a, it's not a lift up your hands thing. It's a one-to-one. -one. I release them. Maybe some of you are angry at your pastor. Release me. Yeah. Release. It's okay to be emotional here because you're, you're wondering, why am I doing this stuff? But it's time to let go. Let go. Come on, church. Let go. Let go. I release you. I'm no longer offended. I refuse to be offended with what I have control over. I refuse. I release my father. I release my mother. I release my former boss. I release my colleagues. I release my sister. I release my ex. 
Come on, church. You've got one minute to do this. Cry out and tell the Lord God, take it out. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I don't want to end up like John the Baptist questioning the same thing I was born for. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. Yes, Lord. Come on, don't, don't hold it back. If you have to cry it out, cry it out. It's okay, you're in church. It's the safest place you can ever be emotional. It's okay to be you. It's okay to let it go. It's going to hurt. But you're going to be free. Come on. Come on. Yes, I refuse to be. I don't want to be in Jordan excited and then in prison. Missing out. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't know who it is here that needs to forgive their parents for what they did to you. That uncle of yours that touched you inappropriately. Release, release, release. It's time to let go and let God. Let go and let God. It's so much pain. It's so much pain. Release it. Ooh. Release it. Release it. If this is just one person, I'm okay. But let them go. 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 You've held it too long, but nothing has come forth. Let them go. 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 Release it. Release it. Release it. Release. Lord, look at them. Release it. The spirit of offense is leaving this house. As a church. I wish you could go back home and text your friend and text the person and tell them, you know what? I forgive you. Or tell them to forgive you. But you have to let it go today. The spirit of offense will rip you off the blessings God has for you. Come on, church. Together, let's just ask the Lord to help us deal with this spirit called offense. Everyone that I've offended, ask the Lord to help you. Lord, help me see my wrong. Lord, help me see my wrong. Yes, have been hurt. Yes, have been broken. Yes, have been wounded. But Lord, I want to see where I've gone wrong. I seek forgiveness, oh God. Help me, oh God. Yes, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Lord, we thank you for these ones, Father, today. As they let go of the pain and this offense that wants to steal their blessings. Lord, I pray now that you show them grace. Lord, help that bleeding sister that wounded brother. In Jesus' name. Look at me, church, as I end. There we come. You're probably going to do something that you never thought you would ever do in your life. And it might be the hardest thing ever. But I promise you, you will see the freedom and the breakthrough that will come with this one task going to pick up your phone much later text maybe tomorrow call the brother that sister that needs to be called you'd have to call your ex forgive them stop calling them if your husband sees his phone number that's not me don't call me but you're going to do one thing you're going to allow them go free them are you here in church freedom. There's so much more behind. There is so much more on the other side. 
There is so much more. You know, when he do you know what it means for 9,000 people? 9,000 men. But there are two different stories. One side was 4,000. One time was 5,000. Loaves, five loaves and fishes. It's two different scenarios, not one. 9,000 people that he fed whilst he was on the cross would have been offended. He still looked at them and said, Father, forgive them. I mean, forgive the people that shouted Hosanna on a Monday and crucify him on a he would have been offended right if anyone had a reason to be offended it would have been Christ but he looked at the people who crucified him and said to the father forgive them and that's one thing I'm saying to you today forgive them God bless you